Uh, morning, everybody. Um, welcome. You know, I always know on Friday mornings people come dribbling in, especially after last night and a few drinks and everything else. Um, but we have a we have a great we have a great program today, and um, we're going to kick it off with. Um, Steve Dan, the founder and CEO of Amplified Robot, who has now also solved my other problem, because I'm going to get one of these, right? You're going to give me one of these, like robots to clean my house and do everything. And My personal assistant, super, okay. So um, Steve's going to talk to us uh, about the future, okay? Thank you, Steve. He had a good night last night, so uh, I'll, I'll try and liven things up a little bit this, this morning. Um, I'm Steve Dan, the founder and CEO of uh, Amplified Robot. Now, guys, can we have silence? Silence, please. Joking. Hi. 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 Thank you. Great. That's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll shout louder as well. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm the founder and CEO of Amplified Robot. Amplified Robot does everything in virtual reality, augmented reality, and 360-degree video space. So we, I'm going to be talking about those things and, and how they relate to uh, retail and local shopping. Uh, so. Virtual reality, augmented reality, two different things. Virtual reality is when you put on a headset and you get immersed in something and you're transported somewhere else. Augmented reality is when you actually see something, you see a, a room like this and you view something through your mobile phone or tablet and something else appears. Um, and actually, uh, we'll get a, a little bit onto that later on. So, just a quick look at the guard and the curve, because uh, augmented reality and virtual reality have been around for a long time. Um, virtual reality uh, was around about 25 years ago, but uh, didn't really make it, and that was partly because the technology wasn't there to make it happen. But it's going to happen, and 2016 is the year of virtual, virtual reality. Um, so, it's just actually sort of uh, climbing up the slope of enlightenment. Uh, augmented reality is taking a little bit longer, although we do do quite a lot of applications uh, for companies. Amplified Robot does a lot of white label uh, work for all the big uh, retail companies and pharmaceutical companies, for instance, and publications. Um, so it's going into the trough of disillusionment, but in a couple of years' time, it's actually going to be part of everybody's life. So virtual reality. Headsets, as I say, when, when you put these headsets on, you immerse yourself in a different world. And there's lots of different types of headsets, as you can see from the, this slide here. Um, the top right, uh, you've got what's called Google Cardboard. That's an entry-level version. Um, it's actually devised uh, by Google and uh, to get people to actually sort of try out vir virtual reality. And they cost about between $5 and $10, um, and obviously they can actually be branded up for you, you as well. And that's actually proved quite, quite useful. The one in the middle is the Oculus Rift, and it was really Oculus Rift that started the new uh, surge in virtual reality. Invented by a young guy in uh, a trailer, in, he parked in the garage of his uh, parents' driveway. Um, he went on Kickstarter, because he wanted to make a prototype. Uh, he wanted $250,000 to make the prototype. He actually got two and a half million, so he got 10 times as much money. That attracted the venture capitalists to have a look at what he was doing, and he raised another $70 million straight on the back of Kickstarter. But that wasn't the end of it, because Mark Zuckerberg heard about it and decided that this was going to be a perfect fit for Facebook. So Facebook paid him $2 billion for the company. Um, and now he's only, Palmer is still only 23 years old. So he started off when he was 19 and has made a $2 billion industry company. Uh, and really, as I say, he's kick-started everything because everything that's happened since then, because Google Cardboard what didn't happen before that. Um, and as you see, there's lots of different types of headsets. Some are for gaming, some are for on the move, some work with your mobile phones. And also, there's lots of different ways you can interact with them. You can actually use game controllers. You can use your hands to actually sort of reach out into thin air and make things happen. 
Um, and there's also controllers as well, which actually give you a really, really sort of good idea about what's happening and how you can control things. So, case in point, for retail. Merrill, Merrill uh, makes shoes, uh, specifically for out, outdoor hiking, these sort of things. Um, and they wanted a way of, in actual fact, bringing uh, what they do into stores and giving people an experience of what it's like to go out hiking in one of their shoes or rock climbing. And so they created this virtual reality program, which we're going to have a quick look at now. Merrill is launching their newest, most advanced hiking shoe, the Capra. So how do we show people the extreme places this new killer shoe can take them in a new and exciting way? The very first Oculus Rift virtual reality experience that uses motion capture technology so the user is able to walk around in a virtual world. Welcome to the Dolomite. Once that mist clears, head down the bridge. Do I? Yeah. 4D elements like the bridge, wind, and the ground shaking made the experience feel even more lifelike. People were amazed. That's yeah, crazy. Was way cooler than I was expecting. It was the most amazing thing ever. Terrified. I'm still walking like this. Literally felt like I was like. That's, that's pretty intense. I'm actually moving through that space. It's just there's no other feeling like it. Speechless. Yeah. Holy okay. yeah. oh, cow. And most importantly, it made them want to get outside and do it for real. There, guys. Thanks. That's what you can do with virtual reality. Um, and believe me, if you haven't tried it, it's a great thing to do because you think just by putting a headset on, you couldn't be transported somewhere else. You can be. Uh, everybody that uh, puts a headset on, especially for an experience like that, when in actual fact you thought you were walking along a rickety bridge which was actually suspended over a gorge which has had a 200 foot drop, and in actual fact the, uh, the bridge started to disintegrate as you were walking across it. So, and people actually, that now they know they haven't gone from the shop, they know they haven't been transported up a mountainside, but the brain is telling them they have been. So they get a fantastic experience, and they match that experience to obviously the shoes as well. Let's go a little bit onto augmented reality, because I think augmented reality has uh, even more to, more to do in, uh, in retail because it's sort of really solving real problems for shoppers and or retailers. Because if we don't solve some of these problems, this is what's going to happen. The high street's going to go, even shopping malls could go. Because what happens right now is a lot of people will actually still go out shopping, but they're actually not buying as much actually in the shops when they get there. They're actually going on their mobile or going back home and then buying online. So that's a problem for the retailers because they've got expensive bricks and mortar shops and shopping malls to maintain. And it's, it's non-sustainable at the moment. A lot of the uh, shopping malls uh, I know are actually down 40% on, on the money that they're taking. The footfall is still the same, but actually what the money that's actually coming into the shops is going down phenomenally. So, how do you fight back from that? And there's a number of different ways you can do it. Within in shops, you could work for, with brands, you could work for the, specifically for retailers, and also for the consumers. And you can do things like that. You can have things inside the shops, like the magic mirror. Um, now, magic mirrors, there's things you can stand in front of and do various things. You can try on makeup without putting makeup on gives you virtually try it because it's actually the mirror actually puts li lipstick on you and the right sort of uh, cosmetics or it can be something that you could wear and uh, we're going to have a little look at a, a, a short video from Cisco because Cisco see this as part of the future as well and it ties in also with uh, contactless payments and things like that. <laughs> This is the hottest for the season. Okay. No. <laughs> it's a 
little too busy. Too purple. Too short. <laughs> too hot. Yeah, that's new. Okay. I think my mom wore this. <laughs> this is great. Blue. Uh, where do I sign? I just did. So that's Cisco's idea of where we go from here. And there's quite a lot of people trying out sort of variations on that. Um, and it's proving to be quite successful because no matter how big a store is, if, if you've got clothing, you can never have every size in every style in every piece of clothing. But you can electronically. You can virtually. So people can actually try on whatever they, whatever they like and make sure that it fits. Um, that also translates at home as well, but it actually translates very well with inside the, the stores. And it means you don't have to keep taking clothes on, taking clothes off. You just stand in front of the mirror and that, it does it for you automatically. So the biggest thing, though, is about what people are carrying around with them. It's smartphones because you can do fantastic things with smartphones now. Um, 46 million people, adults own smartphones in the UK out of 60 million people. That's a pretty high figure. So you can see the demographics here. Um, that it's exactly the right sort of demographics that people want to get to because they're the highest spending part of the Sort of the, the, the highest spending part of, of the, uh, um, the, the retail business. Um, over half, half of smartphone owners regularly use their devices uh, for actually making and buying and, and things. They actually, they're never without their smartphones now. So retailers, if they don't get into smartphones, they're, missing, they're going to be missing out on 6.6 .6 billion pounds worth of business if they don't go mobile. 40% of all, consu all consumers feel the mobile experience could be improved. That's true, because every, because people are trying things out, and we, we're trying to find out what works best. And of course, as each new phone comes out, they're, they're smarter, they're better, you can do more things with them. And consumer spending on mobile is going to top £53 billion by 2024. So there are 1.5 billion smartphones sold worldwide. So it's a, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Now, to do that, we at uh, Amplified Robot, as I said, we work with a lot of companies to do white label devices. We also make some of our own. And one of the things that we created was called eye balloons. Um, and eye balloons don't really exist um, because they're virtual balloons. And you can download the app, put it onto your phone. And then what we do is that we seed these balloons anywhere, in the high street, in a shop, in a shopping mall. You can't see them with your eyes, but when you look through your smartphone, you can see them. We can put them anywhere. We can actually move them around. We have total control of what we do with these balloons. It's there to encourage footfall, encourage dwell time, enhance the shopping experience, gather user information and data, and track the user experience. It's inexpensive to do. So what happens is that with each of these balloons, there's attached rewards points. So when you find the balloon and you pop it, you get a reward. And that reward could be a coupon, it could be a free muffin in Starbucks. That's the idea. And we could actually track and build up how people are using their smartphone. So we get to know exactly what that person likes. So we build up a background knowledge so that we can actually push interesting details and discounts specifically towards them. So as I say, points can be exchanged for discounts, coupons, and we add value. So the balloons are individually controlled and positioned. We can up the points, take the points down. We can make them more, make them less, depending on the day, depending on the time of day, depending on what type of stock you have within the shop. 
They can be increased and decreased at the touch of a button. And in additional incentives can always be, always be added. If it's a slow week, a slow day, or if it's been raining and you want to sell something that's to do with war umbrellas or something like that, that's fine. You can add that straight away. But the other thing is to do is it actually to make shopping an experience which is also rewarding. Here's a little video about it. Welcome to the world of eye balloons. It pays to have your smartphone with you when you're shopping. Hidden within your shopping mall are special virtual balloons which you can discover using your smartphone. You capture your eye balloon and pop it to release your points reward. Collect your points and exchange them for gifts or vouchers. Make shopping rewarding with eye balloons. So, that brings us to the end my little sort of uh, opening. I hope it's been interesting for you. Uh, are there any questions? I, I would like to start out with a question, Steve. Um, you know, when I when I come when we do these conferences and I hear about this stuff and I see it, but um, when I'm actually out there, I haven't e as a consumer haven't experienced it. Even though, of course, we're in the business, so we know about it. Is this going to be something that all of a sudden is going to come like a wave on us? Because you know, you, the eye balloons. Now I'm going to download it. And I'm going to, it, I take it it's in London. Uh, do they have them in London? Or uh, well, can you just it, talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. In, in, in actual fact, we'd be doing some trialing at the moment. So it's not downloadable yet because we're talking to a number of big retailers that actually might want, want to take it on uh, and might want to actually own it themselves. So, uh, but within the next three months, it will be live on the uh, mm -hmm. iStore and, and Android store as well. Mm -hmm. But but to, to my second question, okay, so I don't get any balloons tomorrow. But uh, but uh, to my second question, I mean, I haven't really experienced these things like with Cisco and stuff in the stores at this yeah. point, and I shop a lot. Okay, so I guess my question is, you know, is this going to just come to us like a wave, or you know? I think I think it is. I think I think there is with a lot of new technology. There's always a little bit of reluctance to, to take it on because people don't quite know how it's going to work or whether it's relevant for them. I think that we're just at the start of the the wave starting to build up now, um, and it's exactly the same way as it's taken virtual reality about three years to sort of really sort of break into the consciousness and, and get everybody sort of pumped up about it. It's probably going to take about two two and a half years for this to actually be get on people's radar. Mm. the actual sort of man in the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions? Stunned yeah, everyone in silence there. Yeah. Hi. Hi I was just wondering if there are particular sort of campaign uh, categories or verticals that you think lend themselves better to this than others. Yes. I mean, uh, both in virtual reality and, and, and augmented reality, uh, they actually sort of go across a whole, whole, a whole range of sectors. Uh, but there'll be different things in different sectors. They'll be useful in different ways in, di in, di in different sectors because it has strong points in one way and strong points in another way. So it's really sort of depending on the type of sector and depending on what you want to do because the, uh, because the eye balloons concept as well is uh, we've also got part of it which is called a, a secret shopper which in actual fact uh, means that you can actually, if you find this particular balloon, it gives you a discount code, well actually a discount clock, um, and it's a huge discount. Um, and if you find this, uh, it's usually related to one particular store or one particular shop. If you go in to that store or that shop and actually spend within a certain amount of time, you get that discount. But for every minute you don't, the discount decreases. And you can see it decreasing on your phone. So it's an incentive to go in there and buy, buy in the store, not buy on the mobile, not buy, not buy at home. I've seen stores um, do that with hashtags. Or, yeah. You know, so do you expect, is your, and is your plan to have this replace, I guess, a Twitter approach? I think it is. I think, I, I think you also <laughs> use it as well. I mean, I think, I, I think that we use everything that's out there. Because there's, because there's now a great arsenal of what you can do and what you can, what you can attach things to. I think that Twitter, because the other thing as well is that when you, when you personally find these rewards and these things that are relevant, you can actually tell your friends. 
And if you tell your friends and they come and use the eye balloons or they come and actually use that experience as well, then the next time you go for a discount, it's even bigger or you get more rewards. So in actual fact, you get the actual shoppers will actually be telling your story as well and increasing your sales. Okay. Well, thank you, Steve. Right, thank you. Can you let me know when I can download that? <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And, 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 if you. and if you want to find out any more, you can go to uh, our website um, and please do and sort of give me a call if you need to know any more. Thank you so much.